UK interest rates are the lowest they've been for three centuries. Many people think the Bank of England will keep rates low because of uncertainty around Brexit. We disagree. We think that US rates may drag UK rates higher. To find out the reasons for this, but also to understand how monetary policy actually works, watch this video. The Bank of England has a really nice explainer on how monetary policy works. Remember, their job is to steer inflation close to this 2% target, and the primary mechanism by which they achieve that is to set interest rates. The economy is a little bit like a party. If the party is growing a bit dull, you spike the punch bowl. If the party is getting a bit too rowdy, you take the punch bowl away. The monetary policy equivalent of absolute vodka is to lower interest rates. This lowers the cost of borrowing, it makes savings less attractive and borrowing more attractive, and by lowering debt servicing costs, it increases disposable income. There's also a wealth effect because lower rates tend to boost equity prices and house prices. And when people feel richer, that wealth effect makes them spend more. As a result, output increases, employment increases, and the demand for employees grows more quickly than the supply of employees. That means wage bargaining favours employees which can also lead to wage inflation. If the MPC removes the punch bowl by raising rates, everything goes in reverse. Spending falls and inflation falls. The scenario we're in at the moment is on the right-hand side in red. We've had a very long period of very low rates. And yes, they're the lowest since 1694. The equivalent of the Monetary Policy Committee in the US is the FOMC, the Federal Open Markets Committee. And here you can see them in action. On Valentine's Day, Fed Chair Janet Yellen gave her semi-annual monetary policy report to Congress. As usual, she spoke in central bank speak, or Fed speak in this case, which is always very cagey. But I've highlighted one note of clarity. She says that if you take away the punch bowl too late, that means you may have to raise rates rapidly. And that could cause a disruption to financial markets and push the US economy into recession. And given the importance of the US economy, that would be a bad outcome for the whole world. Now, since the financial crisis, and you can see the US recession after the financial crisis in grey, interest rates in the US have been at zero for about seven years. And in December, we started to see them rise. The effective rate is now about 0.34%. The people you saw around that table at the FOMC each gives one dot on this chart. This is their best guess of the policy rate in 2017, 2018, 2019, and in the longer run. Each time they raise rates, they do it by a quarter of a percent. So that would translate into three rate increases in 2017. That's a fairly speedy outlook for rate increases in the US. But here in the UK, growth hasn't been as strong as the US. So people think that we're less likely to increase rates in the UK for some period of time. And they call this policy divergence because the policy rates in the UK, but also in Europe and Japan, will remain low for some period of time, lagging behind the US. And why should we care about the US? We've got 2,000 miles of Atlantic separating us from the US. We've got our own currency, we have our own central bank, and we have our own monetary policy committee, which sets rates that are appropriate to our own economy. Here they are looking resplendent in their suits at the Bank of England. And although the Bank of England projects that inflation is likely to increase because of the sterling devaluation following Brexit, they stress that they'll remain cautious because of risks to the economy. So the outlook for rate increases in the UK is still fairly balanced. But what if we were linked to the US more closely than we expect? This is a 2012 research paper from the IMF. What they've done is to split growth into the cyclical bit, that's the booms and the busts on the left, and the slow trending bit, which is the stuff on the right. Now what's remarkable is that the booms and the busts, the cyclical growth, is highly correlated, both within developed markets, but also between emerging and developed markets. Whereas on the right, you can see that the trend growth is extremely divergent. Developed market growth has just been atrocious since the global financial crisis. But if you strip out the booms and the busts, emerging markets are powering ahead. The report says that the correlation in booms and busts is down to three factors. Firstly, the share of trade and global economic activities increased, and that's why recessions in one country tend to spread out into others. And the same is true when one economy booms, it drags up the others, particularly a large country like the US. Secondly, financial markets are highly interlinked. 
Investment banks are global entities, and it's easy for a multinational to buy instruments in any country. That means that financial markets are highly interlinked, and if there's a problem in one country, it spills over into others. The subprime mortgage crisis in the US is one example of that, and the Greek sovereign debt crisis is another. And a more intangible factor is animal spirits. Markets aren't just rational. They have a mood. Sometimes that mood is positive, sometimes it's glum. And that's a really important driver of returns. Bull markets can be driven by positive sentiment. And the Trump rally since November the 8th is a great example of that. Trump has definitely rekindled animal spirits in the US, and that's spilled over into share markets globally. But this is nothing new. If you look at historic growth rates for the US, the UK and Germany, you can see that when there's a recession in the US, which is at the top, the UK and Germany seldom get away without a recession of their own, or at least a slowdown. And if we look at policy rates in those three regions, you can see that they too are highly correlated. And if you look in detail, you'll see that the Fed tends to lead the Bank of England and the ECB. In other words, where they go, we follow. So if the Fed does start to raise rates more quickly than people expect towards the end of this year, I think it's very likely that the Bank of England and the ECB may not have a choice but to follow. But that may be for good reasons, because growth may pick up in these two regions as a result of increasing growth in the United States. But there are some worrying things about the UK economy. The primary worry for me is household indebtedness. In the UK, we're up to our eyeballs in mortgage debt. The measure used by the Bank of England is the household debt to income ratio. If the household income is 100k and the household debt is 100k, then that ratio would be 100%. At the moment though, we're not far below where we were before the global financial crisis in 2007. The UK economy never really delevered after the crisis. That means that if interest rates do increase, it could be very expensive to service the debt that we hold. And that may be a significant drag on UK growth. Also, the very strong growth we saw at the end of 2016, which surprised the Bank of England, was partially thanks to a rise in consumer credit growth. We went shopping, but we did it on our credit card. Which means that if interest rates rise, that activity will fall. So to summarise, we think that UK rates may be dragged up by US rates, but because we're so highly indebted, it's going to hurt. Thanks to Brexit, not many people think that rates are going to rise quickly in the UK or in Europe. If we're right and that does happen, then you should cut your exposure to long-term bonds. That's bonds with long duration, because they're the ones which will sell off the most. A rising interest rate is something that worries you. Perhaps you're a household which is heavily in debt, and you're struggling to pay the mortgage. And do you think the Bank of England will raise rates if they know that the UK is so heavily indebted? Tweet us your views at Pensioncraft or message us on Facebook. And if you like what you see, subscribe to our videos.